Simply put, objects are the items that make up and do most of the work in your games. Construct2 has a rich set of plugins that define what kinds of objects that you can include in your games. An example of a plugin in Construct2 is Sprite. The term Sprite refers to a digital graphic that can be moved on screen and individually manipulated. Video games consist primarily of sprites. In Construct2, you will be defining what are called object types. In this example, I created a B object type, which is a sprite. Once you have an object type defined, you can add one or more individual instances of that object type to the layouts of your game. Each instance or object you place on a layout must be assigned a specific layer which defines its Z order. The object types you define will likely be single image sprites or sprites comprised of one or more multi-image animations. Construct2's Image and Animations Editor is where you work with graphics. One powerful feature therein is the ability to create one or more image points for your graphics. Image points are exactly what they sound like, points on an image. You can define useful points on an image that can later be used when you are coding your game. For example, if you had a hero that threw fireballs from their left hand, then you might create an image point on the hero's left hand so that you could spawn fireballs when the user hits the space bar, for example. Every sprite has a special image point called the origin. The so-called origin point defines the object's center of rotation. It also defines how an object is snapped to the layout view's grid. The origin point is always the first image point for an object type and is represented by the index 0. It is extremely common in computing to start counting from 0. This is what we refer to as 0 indexing. The object types you create will often have things in common. You will find it useful to group your object types into what are called families. Families are essentially groups of object types that share the same plugin type. For example, a family of sprites that all have something in common. In this case, I have created a family named enemies and included within it three sprite object types, all that are enemies. The goal of families is to simplify your game development. Families simplify your game development by allowing you to treat many separate individual objects as a single object or group. For example, let's say you are creating a game in which there are many enemies that can destroy the player. Instead of coding for each individual enemy, you could put all your enemies into a single enemies family and then write code which references the family instead of each and every type of enemy. All right, let's talk about object types. Object types are the definitions for all of the items that you want to include in your game. Creating an object type is very simple. You go to the projects bar and then you will see that there is an element object types. There's a folder. All you have to do is right click and choose insert new object. And then you'll have a bunch of different choices. Construct2 has a lot of different plugins which define the type of objects that you can create. Most of the time you're gonna be choosing a sprite. I wanna add a slime block to my game. So I'm gonna make that the name for my object type and then click insert. When you create an object type, you'll see a crosshair appear and you'll also see in yellow, it's telling you which layer this object type will be placed upon. What is the active layer? All you have to do is click on the layout and then you'll see some windows that look like this. This is Construct2's image and animations editor. You can create your own simple images, you can create um, animations, or you can create single graphic sprites. So in this particular case, I'm gonna load an image from a file. I have a slime block already in my assets that I'm gonna use. Just got to find it. There it is. I will select it and click open. It will automatically put it onto this stage. And on the left side, you'll see that there's a bunch of different options. One of the options I want to point your attention to is the set collision polygon. Now, a collision polygon is commonly referred to as a hitbox. This is what defines a collision for this object. So for something to collide with my green slime block, it would have to cross one of these blue lines. I'm going to go ahead and set to bounding box. So a more generous hitbox, let's say. So that is a collision polygon. And this is very important in game design. You can use it for a lot of things. The other thing is image points. If you click on this little image point dialog, you'll see that every single object has one image point. It's called the origin. 
And right now my origin is right in the center of my green slime block. The origin defines the center of rotation for an object, so it's a very important thing to know about. Why is this important? If I go back to my layout, you will see that I'm able to place on the grid my slime block, but because its origin point is the center, it's really hard for me to set it right on the ground. So what I'm going to do is go back to my slime block, and I'm going to change the origin point to be, let's say, on the middle of the ground or the very bottom middle of the object itself. So since it's 96 pixels tall, I would just choose 96 for my Y dimension, and you'll see now my origin point is the slime block's middle bottom. Click the red X to close, and now when I place my object, you will see I can put it squarely on the ground. So the origin point that you determine for your object types is extremely important. You'll also notice this little rotation handle. See how I put my origin point on the middle bottom? So when he spins, he spins like this. Remember, it's the center of rotation. So it rotates around that point. If I go back in and I put it back to the center, then when I use the rotation handle, he rotates based upon the middle, almost like a wheel on a bike. So those are your origin points. You also have the ability to create additional image points. You can't get rid of the origin, but you can create other ones. So for example, let's say I wanted to create one for his left eye. I can square right there. And now I have an image point called left eye, which refers to his left eye. If I look at origin, center, left eye, so forth and so on. I'm going to go back to my origin. I'm going to make it the middle bottom. And I'm going to place him on the ground. Let's see here. Right now his angle, angle zero. If you want to duplicate your objects, you can control drag release to create as many as you'd like. Move these out. So what we've created here is a slime block object type. But every individual object of that type you place on the layout is called an instance. And that's why you'll see things like instance variables. This is very common in computer science to create a category, a classification, a type of something, and then to quote unquote instantiate it, to create a unique version of it. So right now I have three instances of the slime block. Sometimes you'll hear me just say three objects. Let's do a more complex example. Let's say I wanted to create a sprite that had an animation, one that had more than one graphic. So to create an animation, it's very similar. Go to your object types, right click insert new object, choose sprite, and then name your object type. For me, it's gonna be B. Once again, the crosshair appears and you'll see in yellow the active layer that it will be placed upon. I'm gonna go ahead and click. Now what I can do is I can use my animation frames editor. I can right click and say, import frames from sprite strip. I like to use sprite strips a lot. It simplifies um, graphics and creating animations. So right here, I've got a sprite strip that's got two frames, um, two horizontal, one vertical. And I'm going to use that to create a bead whose uh, wings flap. I'm going to choose that and press OK. It's going to ask me how many horizontal cells I have, how many vertical cells I have. I have two Bs side by side in one row, so I have two horizontal, one vertical. And replace entire existing animation, why not? Press OK. And press OK. So here I am. Now I have an object type that's actually an animation. You'll see over here in this animations bar, there's actually a default animation. And over here, that animation has properties. I'm going to go ahead and make this one loop. Just like with everything, you want to take a look at your collision polygon, your hitbox. You can have it guess the shape, let's say. You can do that for each frame because each frame is a little bit unique. So here I have my collision polygon, uh, which defines uh, the boundaries for a collision. And then I can do my origin point. It's really important if you have an animation to do the origin points right. We've got 47, 36. That looks really good. What you can do with your origin points is you can actually choose a frame 
and then you can say, all right, I want this to apply to the whole animation. And that way, your second frame is also 47 by 36. What's really cool about the tool is you can come over here and you can preview what it's going to look like. And that looks like a pretty cool flying bee. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of here. And there's my bee. And now what I can do is control drag release to create as many bees as I want. I can use the rotation handle to have them rotate, all kinds of cool stuff like that. Okay, so now when I run my layout, it looks something like this. So I've created new object types and created instances of those object types on my layout. Another thing that's really useful to know is families, especially when it comes to object types. So I've got a little game here, and what I wanna do is I wanna have the player die, I guess be destroyed, whenever it collides with the slime block or the bee. So I'm gonna show you how um, to do this with and without families, and hopefully this will uh, demonstrate the point. Okay, so if I wanted to code that, I would go into my event sheet, and I would look for when the player collided with, let's say, the B. If the player collided with the B, then what I'd want to do is destroy the alien, which is sort of our uh, visual depiction of our player. I would want for the player to spawn some particles And then I would want to destroy the player. And let's say we want to sleep for a couple seconds. Wait, let's say 3.0, and then restart our game by restarting the layout. Okay, if I go back and play my game now, if I collide with the slime, nothing happens. But if I collide with the B, boom. Muerte. So for each enemy, I would have to come back and I would have to change this to include every single um, possible enemy I could collide with. So I'd have to add another condition when the player collided with, let's say, the slime block. Then I've got if the player collided with the B or the player collided with the slime block, destroy and all that good stuff. Now when I play my game, here I am, if I hit the slime, I'm gone. If I hit the B, I'm gone. So this works if you have a couple of enemies, but what happens if you have a slew of enemies? This is a terrible way to program. The right way to do this is to create what are called families. So down here in the projects bar, you will see that there's families. Right now, I have one that's called enemies. It has barnacle and lava top in it. All I have to do is edit this family, and I'm gonna have it include, let's say, the B and the slime block, because those are my enemies, and then press OK. So now what I can do is instead of using this logic here, I can create an event that's based upon the enemy's family. So I can say when the player collides with Instead of an individual object, the enemies as a family, press done. And then I'm going to take all these same things I had up here, I'm going to move them down, and I'm going to delete this. So now my logic is a lot simpler. If the player collides with any object type that has been grouped in the enemy's family, then it will perform this work. So let's make sure this is correct. Come back in, bam and bam. So this is how you use families in Construct 2. It makes life so much simpler. Families are restricted, however, to the same type of plugin. So you can only have sprites with sprites. You can only have tiled backgrounds with tiled backgrounds. You can only have text with text and that sort of thing.